Hi, I'm Lauren Parrott, your guest host today for Art and Design. My guest today is an absolutely brilliant author, and he also has to, happens to be my friend that I went to high school with. So please welcome John Durant. Hi, John. Hi, Lauren. Great to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being my guest today. Uh, sure. Love it. <laughs> so you have written a book called The Paleo Manifesto. And it is incredibly interesting to me. Can you please explain what the book is all about? Yeah, it's, it's a health book. It's about how to be healthy today. Uh, basically, by looking at human evolution and, and, and the millions of years that we spent primarily as hunter-gatherers in the wild and what we can learn from, from those ancestors. You know, a lot of the health problems that people have today from obesity, diabetes, arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, all sorts of things like that are what are called mismatch diseases or diseases of civilization where there's a mismatch between our primal genes, our primal biology, and the lives we lead today. So uh, the book is about how to incorporate a lot of that ancient wisdom in how we think about food and movement and fasting and sun and sleep and a whole host of different topics. I think this is incredibly interesting because people are absolutely obsessed with dieting, with, you know, I mean, should I do Atkins? Should I do the South Beach diet? I Veganism, mean, low yes. fat, low calorie, right, Weight right. Watchers, Jenny Craig. Mm -hmm. it, it's insane. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and people are at a certain point are like, enough, everything in moderation. Stop telling me what to eat. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. And eating disorders, among, particularly among young women, mm -hmm. is, is, is rampant. Right. Um, and so I think people are craving some simplicity right. that isn't going to change from one day to the next. You know, one day you hear that all fats are bad for you, and then you hear about the good fats. And, uh, and uh, you know, every week there's a new study coming out saying this, that, or the other. Um, but there is a way to simplify this. For example, if you look at any of the world's top zoos, they all take the same general approach. They combine modern medical technology, and then they mimic the natural habitat of a species. They feed red meat to the lions, bamboo to the panda bears, rodents to the snakes. They feed the animal the best they can, the natu its natural diet that it would eat in the wild, and the rest kind of takes care of itself. So it's just applying this concept to human beings. So what exactly, as a human, as our species, Species. Are you a human? I am a human. All right, good. We're making yes. progress. Yeah. Step one. Yes. I know my, my species. <laughs> that is step one. It, it really is. is step one. Know but, thy species. <laughs> it's, it's the name of a chapter in the book. Yes, and I, I think that's it's hilarious. And, and you're right, it is making things simple that people complicate. Right. So what exactly, as a human, should I eat? What types of things? So uh, pretty much everybody agrees on avoiding junk food. Uh, refined sugar, uh, Coca-Cola, Twinkies. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in agreement that our bodies, our metabolism, is not adapted to eat large amounts of those types of foods. Mm -hmm. um, where paleo is a little bit different than the conventional wisdom is on grains mm -hmm. and grain products. So things like wheat, corn, and legumes like soy, those are out. Mm -hmm. um, those did not enter the human diet uh, really until the last 10,000 years. And then the other area where there's difference from the conventional wisdom is around dairy and dairy products. Um, most people who eat paleo completely remove them, at least initially. And then actually some people add back in uh, full fat dairy like full fat yogurt. Um, or a little bit of cheese or heavy cream or things like that. Okay. So those, those are the main differences. And then people eat, so what do they eat? Uh, meat, seafood, v leafy vegetables, roots and tubers like sweet potatoes, um, eggs, nuts, um, a little bit of fruit, though a lot of fruit these days is very sugary and very sweet and you can sort of overdose on sugar. Um, so so that's, that's sort of the guideline for diet. Okay. Now, one thing that has really upset me is do you buy organic or not? 
or you know, like or organic food. What, so, what's your opinion? So here's the thing on organic. Organic doesn't necessarily mean healthy. Okay. A lot of people treat it as if it's organic, it must be healthy, but that's not necessarily true. Organic sugar is still sugar, mm -hmm. right? Um, if you go into Whole Foods, they have a bunch of organic desserts and heavily <laughs> processed foods there that aren't really Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think organic can be a step in the right direction, but um, I, I focus on trying to eat a diversity of, you know, the food groups that I already mentioned. And then if I get organic, I, I usually focus on animal foods. Like I, I pay a little bit more to get higher quality meat okay. um, and fish when my budget allows. Okay. Because I think that's more important from a health standpoint and mm -hmm. from an ethical standpoint. Right. And I really quickly, I just would like to mention you were on the Colbert Report, and and you were known as the Caveman. That's right. And, and the Paleo Manifesto. Well, it's it says on here ancient wisdom for lifelong learn lifelong health. I think you should hold it up so well, that people. All right. We do have a picture. Okay. In the folder I made, Jeremy, there's a folder. <laughs> um, I will hold up the book, <laughs> but we do have a legitimate picture of the book, and. Um, I think it's it's really interesting to me, and and John Colbert was joking about how it's the caveman diet, but but really, in all reality, um, I think that you know, eating like cavemen, especially we're all. Here's the thing, we are all cavemen and cave women. Yes. And 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 that's the truth. We we spent millions of years leading a, a life in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, and then there has been some recent changes once we settled down and started farming and then after the Industrial Revolution, but we're still pretty much hunter-gatherers at right. our core. Right. Um, and, and we've lost touch with that mm -hmm. and we've forgotten that. Um, so so that's, that's really part of uh, the Colbert interview was, was talking about those points. Mm -hmm. And it's hilarious. I thought you were really funny. Um, that was my first ever TV appearance. And you didn't seem nervous at all. So I, I had a little <laughs> trick that I used um, right before going, well I was, they put me in the hot seat and let me adjust the lights for a few minutes before okay. they started to tape. And it was a fight or flight moment, fight or flight moment. Mm -hmm. And so tons of adrenaline. And it was one of those moments where I was like, I need to lean forward and enjoy this feeling because mm -hmm. otherwise I'm going to get nervous and scared. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I actually imagined, I thought, well, it's, if it's a fight or flight moment, I can't flee. So I imagine that I got into a fight right. with Stephen Colbert on the set of his show and I imagine that I beat him up, <laughs> um, which was pr very relaxing. Yeah. As soon as I actually really envisioned that I had beaten him up, anybody who <clears throat> has you know, won a sports championship or anything like that knows you get a surge of uh, confidence, mm -hmm. surge of testosterone after you win, right. or after your team wins. Mm -hmm. um, and so I felt confident and calm, and it worked. <laughs> and it did work, yeah. and I, I thought it was great, and he was talking about how you're a caveman, and he mentioned your hair and your beard and everything, which I thought, I'm like, oh, it's great because you're playing the part, and but you're sending a message. And the, the message, like I love the fact that you said, it's very simple, stop trying to complicate things. Right. And, and really, because, I mean, I myself, I have tried to, you know, like vegetarian, no, wasn't healthy. Yeah. You know, so then I added meat into my diet, and then you gain weight, and then you try to find healthy foods. Healthy foods still have sugar. Right. You know, and so this really does make sense to me. It's, it's just going back to the basics. Yeah. And for, for a lot of people, simply avoiding sugar and processed foods will be enough for them. Yeah. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if, if those folks don't want to eat paleo, fine. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't work for everyone. Right. It doesn't work for everyone. We've seen the rise of the gluten-free food industry, which is now over a $4 billion industry. Yeah. Um, and continues to grow very quickly. Um, we've seen more athletes uh, and celebrities start to go uh, gluten-free. The top tennis player, Novak Djokovic, mm -hmm. credits his rise to the top of, of, of the tennis world uh, to going gluten-free. Um, and, 
Um, and we're realizing that a lot of people have di digestion issues with wheat or gluten, um, even if they're not full-blown celiacs. Mm -hmm. um, even uh, just a lot, there are a lot of people with Conditions they don't talk about at cocktail parties. Yeah, right. That's it could true. it could be nobody's going to bring up that that they have irritable bowel syndrome <laughs> or Crohn's disease at a cocktail party. It's true. Like, oh, here, let me tell you about what I've been suffering <laughs> yeah. from. And uh, and some of these conditions, we have a name for them, but they're very poorly defined and poorly understood. Right. You know, doctors have certain there are certain conditions that are just known to be a catch-all for a set of symptoms that doctors really have no idea what's going on. Right. Um, and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome and IBS and, and things like that. Um, and a lot of people with, with these sorts of issues are finding that removing grains from their diet and dairy from their diet is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just say to people, experiment with it. Right. Try it for a month see if you get results, and then you can add back in foods and, and see how your body deals with them. You can sort of craft your own diet. Yeah, and I, I asked you, um, you had a book signing yesterday, Yes. and I, I purchased your book on Amazon.com. By, by the way, where can people find your book? They can find the book anywhere where books are sold. It's okay. at Barnes & Noble, uh -huh. Amazon, Books A Million, mm -hmm. uh, little indie bookstores, on iTunes, they can they can find it anywhere. Okay, awesome. Yes, and, and they can buy multiple copies. They can buy as many <laughs> copies as they want. And they should. Yes, I know my brother Joel bought a couple yesterday for himself and for yeah. other people, and I, I think um, it's important. But I also I I got some pictures from from your website, which is huntergatherer.com. I think that's where I got. Yes. I got I looked here all over the internet, so I found some pictures of um, food, types of food, because um, I, I didn't know, um, like right there, there's, there's a picture, what, what is that? That was a, re a release party we did in New York City at a wonderful new restaurant called Hugh Kitchen. Okay. Short for human, and, and that is a Thai fruit salad, um, I think with pineapple and mango, and then uh, some coconut oil or something like that. Okay. Um, that, that was delicious. This is a chicken liver mousse on a grain-free uh, uh, bread uh, that they make with, with, with vegetables. Um, you know, people used to eat liver all the time. Yeah. Every Sunday, mm -hmm. families would have liver because they realized how, how many nutrients were in it. And people just have stopped eating eating liver and it's a shame we should we should really be eating nose to tail yeah there are all these different parts of the animal that have different nutrients in them mm -hmm. from from bones uh, you know women trying to get calcium uh, eat some bones or make make chicken stock where you leach some of the calcium in into the broth mm -hmm. um, heart and 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 bone marrow um, all of these things are nutritious and have different nutrients in them. And you know, I think that there's, there's st such a stigma in our society. Those things are gross. You know, like I, I wouldn't even think about eating liver or stomach, brains, you, bones, are you kidding me? Like I wouldn't even think about it. But you know, going back to the basics, I, I think it's important to understand that it really is good for you. Well, and it is, and we've lost touch with where our food comes from. Mm -hmm.